Today we look at some simple and cost effective techniques to card forging. You know, like smithing. But with paper and ink. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome to DIY Gaming, your source for tips and walkthroughs for making your own prototype and playtesting components. I'm your host Brian Beach and we all know that spinning out cards for your game is a tedious process, especially when you're going for the near finished look and feel for your prototype. Now because of that, it's tempting to go ahead and bite the bullet, have them sent off to a professional printer to be made, but then comes the playtesting and the inevitable changes that result because of that and before you know it, you're sending them off again to have them printed. Now despair not. Recently I've come across a couple of different game designers that have shown me ways to relieve card prototyping. But first, the acquisition of the numerous items. You'll need a printout of your card faces, which can be done on regular paper, enough card sleeves for your deck, and an equivalent number of playing cards. Throw in a pair of scissors, and it's go time. Begin by sleeving the playing cards into your card sleeves. You'll do this for all your cards and all their sleeves. Next, cut out your card prototypes. Not, not much to elaborate on here. <laughs> Just to cut them out. Many of you know I try to stick to the most basic of tools here, but this is boring, so slicer it is. <laughs> Next, sleeve your paper prototypes in front of the playing cards. Pick a card, any card. Don't put something like that in the video. I won't look. This is stupid. Was that your card? I knew it. I'm a magician. You're an idiot. Once all your printouts are sleeved, you may enjoy shuffling, dealing, and playing to your heart's content. In this particular game, which I just made up, we each get five cards, and I go first because I have this pink running girl and this angelic wing creature. But wait, you counter with this combo pair containing clever flavor text. <laughs> but who am I kidding? Let's face it, I'm making this up as I go. We all know who wins. This first method is a powerhouse for making a large number of cards in a short amount of time. It's also extremely inexpensive, but I still get the same feel as a sleeved playing card. But its greatest strength lies in changes I might make. As I play test this, decide something needs to be different, all I need to do is print out a new version, throw away the old, and sleeve the new. Quick note, I sleeve these cards so that the uniform backing faces outward, but you'll notice my sleeves are not entirely opaque and the clubs, spades, and face cards bleed through the backs, which is a bit stupid on my part, but an easy fix. Just make sure to sleeve these so the back of the cards face the back of the sleeves. Doing this ensures uniformity of the cards' backsides. Now this technique is great for front side prototyping. But what if your game needs front and backside graphics? Enter a technique created by Dice Fest Games' Greg Lewis Qualls. The hardest part in printing both the front and back sides to your playing cards is getting the images to line up perfectly. Now Greg solves that problem by designing a template where the front and the back side of the card mirror one another on either side of the seam. All the printing is done on one side of the page, so as long as your fold is along that seam, the cards will, as he says, self-register. For this self-registering prototype, you'll of course need the aforementioned card printouts made on a heavy card stock, some glue stick, scissors, an optional card guillotine, and in lieu of a scoring kit, we're going to use some corrugated cardboard and a couple of rulers. Let's take a look at that mirrored template. You'll notice that on both sides, the top of the cards are positioned toward the center line. Now this must be designed and formatted in your photo editor prior to printing. Notice also the left side has defined borders, while the colors on the right bleed a little past their counterparts. 
This is to give a little wiggle room for human error on the cutout. First, we'll bring in the old scrap of cardboard and line up the center line with the grain of the board or in line with the ridges the cardboard makes. Hold one ruler against the center line while using the corner of the other ruler to score the line, making sure to press hard to crease the cardstock. In fact, in lieu of a scoring knife, a better tool might be the blunt rounded back point of a table knife. We may use that next time. You don't want to cut, however, just a crease. Now, open a can of stick glue on this beast and go to town on the back side of this cardstock. Then fold the sides together, smoothing out from the center fold center out, using a plastic ruler to assist in the smoothing process. Let this dry for a spell and break out the guillotine. Remember to cut the cards apart based on the side with the outlined edges. To finish off these corners, scrapbooking rounders are amazing at this point, but scissors are also good enough for prototypes. And fine, with the double thick cardstock, we have a near finished quality to our play deck. You may even hunt around for some cardstocks that have a nice slick finish that simulate a smooth texture for a more professional feel. What I like about this clever little method is how simple it is. There's no printer calibrations, there's no problems. Whether your game is card heavy or cards are just one aspect of its total awesomeness, these little card hacks are useful, reproducible, and most importantly, easy on your money stash. You're welcome. Thanks for joining me for DIY Gaming. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, like the video, comment, let us know what you're doing. We want to know. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>